We're now being joined by Winnie Bianyima, the Executive Director of UNAIDS. Good evening and welcome to News Nights. Good evening, Good evening. Good evening. Good to Thank see you, you again. Welcome me. to News Night. Now, l let's start with this key issue. We know that you're, uh, you're co-leading on People's uh, Vaccine Alliance, and there is some amount of concern that Africa, a place like Nigeria, is not getting enough through COVAX. What are your thoughts? Let's start from there. Well, what is happening today, South Africa has called a vaccine apartheid, and that's what it is. It is so because 10 months ago, world leaders said that if they find a vaccine, it will be a global public good, and the whole world will be vaccinated and will overcome this crisis globally. But now instead, today, about 300 million vaccines have been rolled out. Of these, most have been administered in just 10 countries, just 10 countries. Last week, here in Nigeria, you got 4 million doses and you're doing the right thing. You're starting with your health workers. They're on the front line risking their lives and that's great. But you've got a population of more than 200 million people with 4 million doses you're not likely to have even 10%, 20% of your population vaccinated by the end of this year. We know that nine out of 10 people in the countries, developing countries that are waiting for this COVAX facility to deliver, nine out of 10 by the end of this year won't be vaccinated. But vaccination is happening at a very fast rate in a few rich countries because they have booked out the entire vaccine. Uh, I'd like to continue with that point because you're making very, very vital points. Yeah. We need to you know, bring in as many questions mm -hmm. as we can. What do you think really is responsible uh, for this situation where it looks like the developing, uh, mm. developing countries like Nigeria are actually being left behind? Is it not naive to actually expect the developed world to you know, really I mean, step up to the plate as far as providing oh, okay. for this part of the world? An artificial scarcity has been created because a few producers, a few people who have the technology have decided, companies have decided to produce what they can produce, sell it at the price they want to whoever they want. And that means, meanwhile, in more than 100 countries where no vaccination is happening, the virus is mutating, it's becoming more dangerous, it will even come back to haunt those same countries who have vaccinated themselves. So it's self-defeating. And also, what we want as Africans mm -hmm. is one, to benefit from this COVAX, which is a, a, like you could say, a basket for poor countries, but also African countries through the African Union are seeking to buy more vaccines from other producers. Mm -hmm. And what we are saying is, don't give away your technology for free, but share it through earning royalties on it, but so that other vaccine producers in other regions produce for their people. You will still make a profit, but you will not make a super profit by creating artificial scarcity. So this is not about asking for charity. It's about solving a global problem with a global solution where those who have hit the vaccine, the technology first, share it. There is a pool which was created by WHO. It's called the CETA pool. Put the technology there. Let those who can, we have vaccine producers in South Africa. We have a company, a government actually company in Senegal, which can produce a vaccine, has been producing vaccines. Mm -hmm. We have even other companies probably here in Nigeria, which yes. within a few months mm -hmm. can ramp up and produce this. It's not rocket science, but they need, we need their governments to rein them in, the companies to share their technology at a price, and we all get better. Absolutely. Okay. Well, yes. we're sure they are, they are listening. Uh, Executive Director, we're just going to take a short break. Okay. When we come back, yes. we'll continue the conversation. Please Thank just you. stay with us. So time for a short break. When we return, Niger's president wins the $5 million prize for African leadership. Do stay with us.
Uh, welcome back. Uh, we still have with us in the studio live uh, the executive secretary, uh, for, sorry, executive director for um, United Nations AIDS. So uh, the question we were going to ask you just before we went on break will be, uh, in terms of the pricing of this product we call vaccine, across board it seems to be high. What are your thoughts and how can Africa survive uh, spending so much money buying this product? And what of course the issue of transparency or lack of it. Absolutely. What Big Pharma is doing is scandalous. These companies that have found the vaccine are charging, first of all, are creating scarcity, charging what they like to whoever. For example, AstraZeneca, Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. They are charging Europe, European countries, about $2 per dose. And you remember you need two doses? They are charging Brazil $5 per dose. That's a developing country, although getting rich. And my country, Uganda, is being asked to pay $7 per dose. Djibouti. Djibouti has borrowed money from the World Bank to pay for that dose $9 per dose, plus interest on the money from the bank. So it's scandalous that poor countries are paying more, and the reason is that they can keep it a secret. The deals are all secret. The scarcity is, is artificial. So we are in a situation where our political leaders are not coming together as a global community to solve a global problem. And we are the losers, our countries are the losers. But today, there's been a meeting okay. convened by the WHO where Big Pharma, those companies which have the vaccine, and a network of developing country producers of vaccines have met with WHO and are discussing how the technology can be shared so we produce for ourselves. Mm. We pay them. It's not about free. It's about being paid, but it's about being human. So how does this further, you know, um, worsen the whole issue of vaccine hesitancy and distrust uh, among the, you know, in the developing nations? Yeah, you're raising a problem that's also further down the road, that even after we have found enough vaccines, fought and got the vaccines, we also have to have the means to roll it out, the transportation, the refrigeration, the, the health workers to deliver it, which is not difficult. We know how to do this in Africa. But the vaccine hesitancy also. There's been so much bad mouthing of this because there's no goodwill. There's a lot of bad mouthing. If people can hide it from you, why wouldn't they also, people think they want to kill us with it. Yes. So, but we have to speak for it, use the evidence, show that it is working and help our people to get it because without it, we will not be able to open our economies and get people back to work. So in spite of the mm -hmm. fact that the AU, the African Union, mm -hmm. has actually been at the forefront of ensuring mm -hmm. that, you know, Africa is not left behind as far as mm -hmm. vaccines are concerned. We, you still have this situation. What then needs to happen? You really ask the right questions. I am a proud African today because of the African Union and our leaders. When European leaders and rich countries were looking inward and booking for themselves and grabbing, Africans came together and developed their strategy as a continent to get the vaccine and share it. We have a strategy called the uh, Africa Vaccine Access Task Team, led by the African Union and our center, our Africa Center for Disease Control, working together to get the vaccine, to, to roll it out and, and get everyone to have. And so far, what has been booked for Africa is a lot through the African Union, but also individual countries. Mm. And in that sense, I feel proudly African because we are showing the right leadership, collective leadership, and pulling together. I'm proud of that. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Winnie Bianyema, the Executive Director of UNAIDS. Uh, we appreciate your uh, contribution you so to the conversation. Thank you this for evening. having me. Yes.